Puss in Boots Once upon a time, there was a miller who had three sons. When he grew old and weak, he called his young and healthy sons to his bedside. He said, Sons, I may not live long. I may die soon. I want my eldest son to have my mill. I want the second to have my donkey. The youngest gets my cat. After some time the miller died. His sons divided the property as he wished. But the youngest son was not happy. He said to the cat, My brothers have got the best shares. What will I do with you? We will soon starve to death. The cat said, Master, let me have a pair of boots, a hat, and a bag. And I will make you happy. But the master was in doubt. He did not have any faith in the cat. But he gave the cat all that he asked for. The cat looked wonderful. So, his master said, I will call you Puss in Boots. Puss in Boots caught a rabbit. He said to his master, I am going to present it to the king on your behalf. The miller's son said, I am sure the king will be displeased with your gift. Puss in Boots said, Trust me, master. And Puss in Boots went off. He presented himself before the king. He said, Your Majesty, this is a gift from the Marquis of Carabas. The king was pleased to have the rabbit. A few days later, Puss in Boots caught some partridges. He again presented them to the king as a gift from the Marquis of Carabas. The king accepted the gift happily. Puss in Boots was humble. The king was impressed by the courteous behavior of the cat. He thought, his master must be proud of him. Then he said aloud, I am happy to have your master's gifts. Do thank him. Then Puss in Boots came regularly to the court with gifts for the king. One day, the king and his daughter decided to take a ride by the river. When Puss in Boots came to know about this, he rushed to his master. He said, Master, I have a good plan. Just do as I say, and I will make you rich soon. We will never be poor again. In the morning Puss took his master to the riverside. He asked him to undress and get into the river. The miller's son did as Puss in Boots asked him to do. Puss just smiled to himself and hid his master's old clothes under a stone. Son the king's coach reached the riverside, Puss ran into the road. He shouted, help! Stop! Help! The Marquis of Carabas is drowning. The king ordered his men to save the Marquis of Carabas. The miller's son was given a set of new clothes. 
He was presented before the king. He looked handsome in the royal clothes. He looked almost like a prince. Puss in Boots said, Your Majesty, this is my master, the Marquis of Carabas. The king was impressed by the Marquis. The princess liked the Marquis. The Marquis of Carabas also liked the princess. The king thought, I am sure that I am not wrong. The Marquis is the right man for the daughter. The king invited the Marquis into the carriage. Puss in Boots ran ahead. Puss in Boots saw some people working in the fields. Puss said, the king's carriage is heading this way. When the king asks, you must tell him that you work for the Marquis of Carabas. If you don't, you will be punished. If you do, you will be rewarded by the Marquis of Carabas. The king saw the people busy in the fields. He did not find anybody lazy there. The king asked them, For whom do you labor? The people replied, For the Marquis of Carabas, your majesty. As the carriage moved further, all the people on the way said that they were working for the Marquis of Carabas. Meanwhile, Puss in Boots came across a beautiful castle. It belonged to an ugly ogre. He went into the castle boldly and said, Master Ogre, I have heard that ogres can do magic. Is it true that you can change into any creature you like? The ogre was vain and haughty. He said to Puss in Boots, do you have doubts about my magical powers? Then just wait and watch. <coughs> and lo! The ogre changed into a fearsome lion. Puss in Boots was a fearless cat. He was not afraid, but he pretended to tremble in fear. Puss in Boots was a fearless cat. He was not afraid, but he pretended to tremble in fear. Puss in Boots said humbly, But Master Ogre, I remember someone says that it is difficult for powerful ogres like you to change into a tiny creature like a mouse. The ogre was stupid. He had been tricked by Puss in Boots. Ogre said haughtily, you will never forget this day. Now see this. And the mighty ogre turned into a tiny mouse. At once, Puss pounced on it and gobbled it up. Puss in Boots was a clever cat after all. Just then, the king's carriage drew at the gates of the castle. Puss in Boots opened the gates. He said, Your Majesty, welcome to the castle of my master, the Marquis of Carabas. The Marquis was dazed to hear that the castle belonged to him. The king was glad to see that the young Marquis owned so much land and wealth. He asked the Marquis to take the princess as his bride. The miller's son was glad to accept the proposal. All the wealth and land of the ogre now belonged to the Marquis. After the king and the princess and Puss in Boots went for a stroll, 
The Marquis said, I am sorry, puss. I had no idea that a cat could make me rich. Now I am grateful to my father for letting me have you. Soon the miller's son and the princess were married. The king showered them with gifts and a lot of wealth. The Marquis of Carabas, the princess, the king and Puss in Boots lived happily ever after. Puss in Boots became the Lord of Carabas. He was given the choicest food. So, he never had to chase a mouse again.